behind me, although you probably can't see it, is St. Bride's Church, which used to be known as the Church of the Printers, or the Printers Cathedral, because it's on Fleet Street, the home of the newspaper world, and it was attended by printers, publishers, and all those associated with the print industry. The church was designed and built by Sir Christopher Wren, and on it he put the tallest of any of the steeples he ever built. It is so elaborate that according to tradition it was the origin of wedding cakes. And so if your wedding cake was a three-tiered elaborate thing to bring joy to the heart of any dentist, you can blame St. Bride's in Fleet Street and Sir Christopher Wren. Down here in the crypt beneath St. Bride's Church, the printer's church as it is known, is something I've not seen before. An iron coffin. It dated from the time when the only source for dissections and anatomy studies was criminals. And quite a trade grew up in illicitly supplying dead bodies. You could make between 8 and 14 pounds, which in the 1800s was an awful lot of money for supplying a dead body. And naturally people wanted to be sure that their bodies would not be dug up and used for these purposes. The solution was this coffin lid, which fitted in securely with those flanged protuberances, which clipped it onto the inside of the coffin, meaning that it could not be opened. And here's the coffin. And thereby hang the tail. Because when one of these coffins was brought to be buried, the authorities refused to let it be buried in their churchyard. A lawsuit ensued, and finally it was agreed that such coffins could be buried, but because they took so much longer to decay than a wooden one, the church authorities could charge a higher price for their burial. The price of immortality, or at least of staying slightly longer in the churchyard, is not cheap, and yet people were prepared to pay it. Not long. Iron coffins soon went out of fashion because of the extra cost, but for a while people regarded it as well worthwhile, knowing that their mortal remains would not be disturbed.